Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Meriwether County Board of Commissioners meeting March 28th for 6 p.m. I'll call this meeting to order. If you will rise for the invocation, remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. The invocation will be given by Pastor William Brown of the Cove Baptist Church. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the ability to be here tonight, the ability to do your work for the fine people of this county. Father, I pray for the wisdom to be in this room, uh, over decisions to be made. Lord, there have been many affected in our community by the weather that's come through this past weekend. Lord, we pray for all those who uh, have been out in this, all our workers, uh, all those EMS and fire and all the linemen that are out doing work to make the people of our county whole again. And Father, I pray that the decisions made in this room tonight uh, might do that as well. Father, I thank you for these people. And Lord, you might lead them well. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Yeah. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Be seated. If you have any electronic devices, cell phones, please silence those for the duration of the meeting. Um, next item is adopt the agenda, but we do need to add under new business item number five. And that is a request to purchase a new tire machine for public works. Item number five under, I'm sorry, yeah, new business. Anything else we need to add? Hearing that, do I have a motion to adopt the agenda? So moved. I have a motion, do I have a second? Second. Okay. Motion and a second, all in favor? Motion carries. No presentations. We'll move to the next item, finance report, Mr. Bill. Mr. Chair, you have the reports in front of you. Uh, the bank balances, uh, general fund still pretty strong. Uh, EMS is uh, pretty strong. We'll be bringing that over the first week in April. So that's going to be another, another good month for, for the EMS billings as well. Uh, and on the splice and T-splice reports, uh, the you will notice that the February amount is a little bit down from the previous months, but if you look at the previous February, you'll see it's right in line with those. I guess it's a short month, plus it's a couple months after the holiday, so it's it's normally down for splashed and t -splashed. But we still have good balances in both those accounts. And that's all I have, unless you have any questions. Any commissioners have any questions? Thank you, Mr. Bill. All right, the next item is citizen comments. Any citizen sign up? Yes. All right, thank you very much. Next item, um, item number eight, the minutes for March 8th, 2023, 9 a.m. regular meeting. If you all have had time to read those, are there any need for change? If none, do I have a motion to accept the minutes as they are? So moved. Have a motion, do I have a second? Right motion and a second, all in favor? Motion carries. No need for public hearing, no appointments. Uh, next item, unfinished business. Item number one, sealing and caulking of courthouse clock bell tower. Chairman, Board of Commissioners. Um, I got a response back from principal construction from Mr. Jay Johnson and uh, they are willing to provide a one year workmanship and material warranty on the caulking of the Atrium court, uh, clock tower dome. And that's um, pretty much it. What was the cost? Pardon? Giving us a year warranty, but what was the cost for them to do the work? The cost was to, what they were going to do is, is uh, reseal the hatch, seal all the joints on the copper, and reseal all the joints coming down the clock tower, take all the caulking out of all the windows take all the lead-based paint off the tower, re repaint, and that price was- uh, $210,788. Yeah, $210,788. That kind of cost, they can only give a one-year warranty? What it said. A lot of money for one year. Well, the, the warranty is for the caulking portion, right? The extended cost is for dealing with lead paint and then working at the heights is one right. reason the price is so high. And their proposal is to uh, repel on the tower. Um, 
it, it was, I guess it was more of a an emergency action we were going after to try to get the water stopped from going in the courtroom and the atrium and things of that nature. So starting with that clock tower, and it's just it's intensive coming off that tower and then coming down. So so. I thought the same thing you did of the cost. We didn't go back and look at it, what it's costing dealing with methane, working at those heights and the safety equipment. That's driving most of the car. I still think the one year will be kind of low. But they, they, I mean, they will have a, a staff person watching the subcontractors to make sure they are following all the safety precautions and stuff. So. And correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Cawthorn, didn't uh, Mr. Johnson say it was just a one year warranty because he's not sure that that will fix all of the leaks? Yes, yeah, it's just really addressing the, the wow. tower. I mean, there may could be some other leaks that occur in other parts of the roof because the first phase, they fixed the drains. So they took all that out, redid and lined all the pipes, re-put new drains and sealed all that. So that's been done. So the next step, we were getting active leaks into the courtroom. So that was the next step. We looked at trying to get that stopped on that atrium tower and the bell tower or whatever. So based on that statement, he's assuming we're asking him to warranty the roof of the entire courthouse, not just this work he's doing. It, this this proposal is just for the clock tower. I understand the proposal. Her statement of the warranty, he was only willing to do it for one year because there may be other leads above and beyond the scope of his work. Right. On the other area, we're asking him to warranty. We're asking him to warranty the work he does on that section. He's, he he will warranty that just the, that one year on the clock tower. He, what he does, what he what work he does, because there's a lot of other areas up there that are not being addressed at this time. The mass, the big, the big plan was <clears throat> after they took the bids and the bids range from like a hundred thousand to five hundred thousand dollars. So we were constantly getting leaks uh, in the third floor. So uh, if I'm not mistaken, Michelle, we were going after trying to get that water stopped from entering the office spaces in the courtroom. So that was that's kind of the task we were going after. And then once we got that stopped, it would go back and look at the whole overview of the entire roof. We hadn't got to that point yet. So the clock tower was the first step in that is the highest. That's a step two. Yeah. The roof drains when they had holes in them. So when every time it rained, Water was running in the building, so that was the first step. And then after that, it didn't leak for about three months, and then until we had real heavy rain, and then it started coming in the clock tower up around the bell. So there's there's a hatch up there, but it's not sealed real well. And then the the copper bands there they haven't been sealed in a long time. There's some decay in wood up in the up underneath inside the copper area. Um, so we were trying to go at, look at trying to get that done. Well, once this is done, no matter who does it, and we approve it to be done, and we complete whatever, we probably need to put a building like that on some type of maintenance plan to where it is checked every year. Every year. Every building. Right. Because we have failed to do that as a county. Right. Right. Yeah. Not, not just that building, but every building. Refresh my memory. We Have we gotten the abatement letter? For that project, so we got what an abatement letter of how much percentage is lead and so forth. Has it been broke down? I know they've tested it, but I don't. I don't know about the abatement letter. You need to see that because when we take these buildings down all the time with lead and so forth, usually you have the letter from the I forget what they call them the terminology, but the engineer that handles that, and then it gives you a breakdown of the cost just to remove those lead products and dispose of them. Okay. And I know, he, you know, I think you have to get a permit or notify the state and all of those. Yeah, but that's what, like the guy I used in the past, they come in, they assess everything, they give us a letter. Before they can do anything, they have to send it to the state, wait like 14 days, and then they can come in. Then they usually give us a price of what the cleanup is going to cost just to clean up. Right. And, uh, and he didn't, he doesn't have that broken down. We could get that if y'all want to continue. Yeah. That's my opinion. If the board doesn't want that, but I'd like to know, I think it'd be nice to know what they're actually charging us just for the cleanup. Okay. You got to usually run by the square foot and so forth. And I just. But at this point, I'm going to make a suggestion with over seven inches of rain this weekend. I haven't been back to the courthouse, but last week when we were up there at the courthouse, <clears throat> that third floor is, it's not good. 
Oh, no, we've got to get rolling. We've, we've, got, got, to get to get, we've got to get this. Uh, and with it being three types of roofs on that courthouse, and it probably will be additional problems that will occur once we fix this. And, but we won't know that until you seal this particular section off, in my mind. But I think we need to move forward. Because we, I mean, this has been a delay now for yep. over two months. Well, well I agree. Actually, three months. Because uh, I believe it first came back first of the year, wasn't it? September, uh, I'm sorry, February 2nd. I'm sorry, February 3rd is the date on the letter from principal. So at the beginning of okay. February. It's but been leaking for it years. First of the year. In years. Correct. It hasn't so. seen any bid yet. Well, the thing is, when it was bid out, it was bid on the first, first go round, and that's where the bids were all over the place. Yep. And we had to come back then, and that's when um, the spark phase was um, zeroed in to do the water. When yes. the original RFP was put out, it was for our new courthouse roof. That's when we received all the bids that were all over the place because there wasn't correct specs in there that indicated what needed to be done to the roof. So you had three different versions of what companies thought needed to happen to the roof. When principal investigated it, they determined that it wasn't necessarily completely the roof, but it was the drain pipes. So that was phase one. The drain pipes were completed. Now they've... Um, been able to identify this as another source of leaking. And I did hear from Kai Gibson after the rain and they do have leaks again on the third floor. But with that amount of rain, you're correct, especially when it's going sideways and coming in that hatch, it, it's it's going to continue. The bids range from 105,000 to 500 and I think 25,000. That was the separation, 539,000. So did the 105,000 include all that is in for the 210? I'm not sure. I don't know. Sometimes you get lucky. Well, I agree with you. It's hard. Involved, it's hard for me to tell. In the habit of, we got to do this so we just go out here and spend taxpayers' money, 200 some thousand, and your warranties. That's, that's, with their work, that's that's not very much. If it goes to leak again, well, we're going to spend another hundred thousand somebody else. But we need to get rolling. We need to get rolling. I mean, I agree. That's not much of a warranty. Do we ask them for extended warranty? Don't hurt to ask for that kind of money. I tell you what, we can make a motion tonight if you guys want to to move forward contingent upon them moving the warranty to eighteen months versus one year. So that way, if they agree to that eighteen month, they can move forward with it. It's up to y'all. But you can make that vote contingent upon warranty. 18 months, 24 months, I think that's, that's worth it. If, if you make your motion contingent, though, that means if they don't they don't agree to the contingency, it's going to be back here at the next right. meeting. I'm just letting it you, would be anyway. Yeah, I'm just letting you know that. So right. I know what contingent means. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Michael likes to correct me. So what's the pleasure of the board? I'd like to make a motion, but let's move forward with the um, scope of work that's been outlined for the, make sure that I get this right. It's the dome, the uh, clock tower. Clock tower. Yes, from the bell all the way down to you get to the main roof. And um, because it is not, a budgeted item, we probably need to use a ARP funds. Bill. Sorry. The, uh, the ARP funds? We're being repairs and maintenance. Loss. So we have it and available. We had it budgeted. We had the courthouse roof budgeted. In SWAS. Correct. So, so is everybody okay with 18 or 24 month warranty if we do that? And we try to get the 24 month. If so, I'll make the motion to accept the proposal tonight from principal based on the um, fact that they will do a 24 month um, warranty versus a 12 month warranty. Sounds better. So that and they put that in the form of a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Let us know. Thank you. Thank you much. Do we also need to add out a, that was already done out of squads. Okay. 
All right, item number two, set public hearing for April 25th, 2023 at 6 p.m. to hear case number 2023-006, request for road closure, Twin Lakes Road from Jimmy Clark Road to Rat Road. Is that correct? Okay. Do I have a motion to set a public hearing for April 25th? Motion, do I have a second? Second. Motion is second. All in favor? Motion carries. Item number three, set public hearing for April 25th, 2023 at 6 p.m. to hear case number 2023-007. Request for road closure, Jimmy Clark Road from Mockingbird Lane to Germany Road. Do I have a motion? That moves. I have a motion. Do I have a second? second. Motion has a second. All in favor? Motion carries. Wait, wait. Excuse me for a second. Okay. Okay. Never mind. Yep. All in favor? Motion carries. Item number four, set public hearing for April 25th, 2023 at 6 p.m. to hear case number 2023-008, request for road closure, Peapod Road to Callaway Road 362 to Lima Lane. Do I have a motion? Motion. Motion, do I have a second? Second. Motion and a second, all in favor? Motion carries. All right, next item, new business. Number one, memorandum of understanding or MOU between, oh, oh, oh. what? We're going to new. Oh, it goes under new. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. No, that's right. <laughs> MOU between Evidence Based Associates LLC and Meriwether County Board of Commissioners. Chairman Threadgill and Board, this is just housekeeping. We are currently under an agreement with um, this. We're under a current memorandum of understanding with EBA, which is Evidence Based Associates, and it. There is there is no cost to the county, and we just work together to assemble the proposal to obtain grants for the implementation of the juvenile justice system reforms. Okay. Do I have a motion to accept? And allow for the chair to sign. And allow chair to sign. So moved. All right. Have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Motion carries. <clears throat> Item number two, request from Lake Merriweather Advisory Board to purchase a storage building for Lake Merriweather. Commissioner Collins will expand yeah, on this one. Uh, the advisory board wants to buy a storage building and store the tools in, get them out of Robert's office. But my suggestion is uh, in the future, I think we probably need to look at maybe adding a lawnmower to the lake keep it mowed. So I would suggest to go ahead and buy a storage building a little bit larger to accommodate a lawnmower in for the future. Do we know what the cost is? No, I have not got that. But I'll get that before the next meeting. Okay. If you'll do that in plus two, if you'll check with um um I'm gonna draw a blank. 30 buildings out of noon, and his name is Bruce. Uh, they have them all the time, like 12 by 24. You know, they rent to own and they pick them back up. Sometimes they'll have them immaculate shape and they'll discount them big time because they've already been used, but they're in good shape. That would hurt to look at that too, just to save a dollar to you. But whatever. Need to make sure we strap it down if we buy one so the rollback doesn't come in and pick it up. <laughs> just saying. Do I have a motion to table this till the next meeting? So moved. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Motion carries. All right. Next item. Hmm? He abstains. Notify ACCG by letter of the county's of the county's intention to seek alternative options for our upcoming property and liability insurance renewal and allow the chair to sign. We would like to um, put the property liability insurance to market. We're not sure what kind of results we'll get. We know we've had substantial claims. It's been a rough year. Yes. So we'd like to appoint them to the chair to sign so we can move forward to the audience. Do I have a motion to allow, put out for bid and allow the chair to sign? I have a motion, do I have a second? Motion and second, all in favor? If y'all could wait till I finish reading and then vote. <laughs> Next item, number four, surplus property located on Church Street, further identified as tax parcel number 168A043 and allow staff to advertise requests for bid. Chairman Threadgill and Board of Commissioners, we discussed this before today's meeting. We just wanted this for the minutes that it's approved. Okay. Do I have a motion to? What motion? 
to allow advertisement and the bid is to start at twenty four hundred. Okay. Do I have a motion? Motion. Do I have a second? Second. Motion. A second. All in favor? Motion carries. Item number five is to request to purchase a new tire uh, machine for Public Works. Yes, Mr. Chair. The uh, machine that Public Works is using now has been there so long that nobody remembers buying it. So it's been there for quite a while. And <clears throat> it's uh, several years ago, I think it ceased to be able to be used on the smaller tires. The only thing they can use it on is the big tires. So they got, got us three quotes to look at, and uh, one from Ranger 5710. One from Coates Rims, one of the uh, Napa stores at almost 10 grand, and then a Hoffman equipment for 11,349. And the one that the public works really wants is the Ranger products from uh, Northern Tools. So it's our recommendation that we purchase the Ranger projects and Ranger products model tire change. And we have funds and capital line account and general fund to cover that. Do we have the money in the account to cover Hoffman? <laughs> The Ranger. I know that's what he said, but do we have enough money to cover Hoffman if that was the route we decided to go? Uh, we have money in that. In that, that, that one yes. also. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure they wasn't requesting the Ranger because that's the cheapest one. Figured we'd approve it quickly. And uh, that that's the first question I asked them which one was yeah. the best, and they said the Ranger was. Okay. They want to make sure they're getting what they need and what they yeah. want. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Hearing that, do I have a motion to allow the purchase of the Ranger Products Model R76ATR for $5,710 from General Fund? Motion. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Motion carries. All right. Next item, report from the County Administrator. Thank you, Chairman Greg Gill. Um, our comprehensive plan meetings will begin on April 12th. We are looking for two commissioners to be part of that. I know it'll be difficult, um, but we'll let you know the meetings ahead of time. We just want to go ahead and advertise it and get that in the paper. Um, earlier today, I sent information on Coleman Creek closure and detour. Um, the 120-day the closure will begin on April 11th. I talked to Chief uh, Chief Deputy um, Hadley this evening, and we are requesting presence of law enforcement for the first few days. He said he will also reach out to Department of Transportation. <laughs> um, we have put no through trucks on both ends. You know, what we're concerned about, of course, is Coleman Circle. So we have put no through truck signs on both ends on both sides. So we're doing all that we can to try to eliminate the trucks from going on those roads and tearing them up. I've sent you guys all that information and has the letter as well as the map of the detour. This is just something I kind of put together myself. So um, we do need to look forward and we don't have to decide on this tonight, but to our former commissioners, we wanted to do some dedications. So we do need to come up with a date, I would say, especially now since weather is getting better, but that's questionable depending on the day. So um, if y'all would let me know some good dates, um, I think April would probably be a good month to do that. Um, but we could, if we could get some dates on the table, that would be good. I facilitated another successful leadership Merryweather for government on March 16th, 2023. And at last meeting, I let you know that uh, Chief Stevens and I worked on an application with Senator Ossoff's office. We have applied for two 3,000 gallon tanker pumpers and two ambulances. We did not get any feedback on the two ambulances. We did get some feedback on the two pumper um, tankers. So we're hoping that we might get more feedback. They've called and asked a couple of questions. So it's looking positive, but we don't wanna get our hopes up. Um, ACH is available. This was included in your expense checks today. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to Mr. Bill or anyone in finance. Um, the Cotton Fair is May 6th and 7th, and Good Shepherd Ranch is hosting a community day on Thursday, which tomorrow is tomorrow, the 30th, from 11.30 to 1.30. Good Shepherd provides residential care to adolescent boys through a unique farm-based treatment program and is located in Warm Springs. So if anyone would like to attend, that's open tomorrow from 11.30 to 1.30. On the 30th? Tomorrow. Yeah, the 30th. Oh, I'm yeah, sorry. Thursday. Thursday. My apologies. I'm sure. Okay. 
Sorry about that. Thank you. Um, Mr. Cawthorn is researching automatic water shutoff for county buildings. You know, we've had a lot of issues with the plumbing. This is one of the more economical routes. So we're looking at that for not just the health department and defects, but all county buildings. <clears throat> we did receive information on the safety LMIG and wants the board to know that we'd like to move forward with that as long as the board comes to a consensus that that's okay. I don't see any reason why we would not want to move forward with that. Is that good with everyone? The safety LMIG? Yes. Um, 4-H report, Meriwether County 4-H. Here's a couple pictures. I'll pass them around. There you go, you can pass them that way. They competed this Saturday in Douglas County, 12 of them compared to last year, there was only four. And they were fourth and fifth graders from Meriwether County. They competed at the event, 11 of the 12 placed in the top three and eight of them got first place. Oh. So I will say I personally went, there was a large crowd, Spalding, Griffin Spalding County had 88 kids, um, but Meriwether really showed up and yep. did showed really, up. really well and showed out, absolutely. Um, Meriwether County 4-H also has a waiting list for both, both the Cloverleaf and Junior camps. And it's a wonderful opportunity and definitely not a problem to have since COVID, you know, during COVID, there was a lot, there wasn't a waiting list. There wasn't a lot of participation. Um, and of course, it's that time of the year again, when 4-H is selling Vidalia onions to help, help offset the camp cost. Please let Ashley know or Miss Beverly know the bags are $10. I mean, $11 for a 10 pound bag. So Meriwether. Yes, never been disappointed. 4-H uh, also received a strawberry educational grant. I love strawberries provided by American Farm Bureau and they will be working at the Mary Co Meriwether County Farm Bureau, the Meriwether County School System, Flint River Academy and Fitzgerald Fruit Farm to provide agricultural curriculum to our youth. I did receive three quotes for pressure washing. They are all under 5,000. They are off a little on comparisons as to what parts. So I'm going to work a little um, more on that to kind of get that narrowed down. And with the weather event, I don't know if, yes, Brenna is on. Um, I did want to go over some of the road closures and what kind of work was done. There, I'll let Bren go ahead and talk about the weather event, and then I'll talk about the road closures and some of the work that was done. Mr. Jones, uh, EMA director. Oh, he's up there. Okay. Yes, hi. Good evening, commissioners. Um, as you know, evening. this week, can you hear me okay? Can you hear me okay? If you're talking, we can't hear you. Uh, no, he's not. Can you hear me? Can anybody hear me? Hear you, Brand, it's a bad connection. I'm sorry. Uh, can I call? I'm going to call Michelle's phone. We'll just move on. We can't. Yeah, hear I'm going to go over. Um, if you don't mind, this will take a couple minutes because it's a pretty long list of roads that were it was cleared or trees were removed or there was flooding. It was a major storm event. We do have confirmation of two tornadoes, one from Sunday and one from Monday morning. I will say. Thank you and kudos to emergency management, um, all of our fire services and law enforcement services, as well as public works who were out there without any sleep and really working to get the county cleaned up. On Dunn Road, a tree was cleared. On Davis Mill, tree removed. Wallace Road Bridge, there was water over the bridge. I think that has gone down. Um, winter. I'm not sure of that one. Gaston at Massa. Oh, you still here, Bill? Oh, do you want to go over these? I'm sorry. I apologize. No, no. Apology. Gaston at. Oh, you can correct me if I say anything incorrectly. Gaston at Massengill Mill um, was blocked on the 27th. Bobby Marshall, 2537 Stovall Road, the driveway. Bill Todd Road, just past 1051, road washed out on one side. Waddell Road and Cove is blocked and closed. Duke Waddell is blocked and closed. 
Barron Road bridge was blocked, Massengale Bridge blocked, and Gadsden, which I think we had earlier. Old Durand Road was cleared. Ogletree Road was cleared. Rosewood Road, there were trees down. Country Club Road was closed, but is now open. Primrose Circle Tree, um, there was some cleanup there. River Cove Road is closed. Magnolia Road, cleanup. Jimmy Clark Road is closed. And Silver Street, the dirt part, is closed. Is there anything that you need to add to that, Bill? And yes. Have we posted anything on our Facebook or social media to let the people know what roads are closed? I actually got two calls today asking about that. So if we need to put that out there. If it's not out there, we'll make right. sure it gets okay. out there. Brendan's working on that yeah. and we shared that with him as well. But we'll make sure it's out there. And if it's not, we'll get it out there. Okay. But there was a lot of hard work that went into it. Uh, we received, I think, an excess of nine inches of rain. Um, and as Mr. Cawthorn said, we will be, as the water recedes, we'll be finding more issues. Yeah, because the, the creek on my road yesterday, I said, I bet it's going to be over the road in Hatton. But when I left to come here just now, it's up to the white line. So by the time it crests some more tonight, it's going to be over the road. But we have access both ends, so ends. it won't okay. be closed. Plus the river probably. Yeah. Yeah, the river probably deep in there. Yeah. Because a lot of the roads that were covered yesterday are now clear. Right. So I think everything's going towards the river. I actually crossed from Columbus to Phoenix City today over the river. It looked like a level five uh, kayak out there. It was like a level five. River Rapids? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Next item is report from the county commissioners. Commissioner Collins. I just like to thank all the county employees again for the job they've done, especially since we had all the flooding. And uh, I'd like to thank McCoy Graydon for uh, loaning us some barricades to block off some of these roads. And then on the Coleman Creek Circle, when we get all the extra traffic on there and they tear the road up, maybe we can get some money from the DOT to repave it. And Mr. Robert Lovett said, He's never seen the lake Merriweather as high as it was this time. Did the water get above the Sir? Did the water get above No. He said it was about two foot from going out of the spillway. Hmm. The, the docks were covered. Yeah, you can get our pictures, Matthew. Are you able to bring those up? I apologize. We can hold off on the pictures, but there's a lot of pictures from this weekend. And I have I took a picture at Lake Merriweather on March um, 15th, and just the difference in, in how, how the lake is up is unbelievable. So that was March 15th, you can see the boat ramp. And then the next picture, well, maybe not. I guess flat shows. Yeah, I think. I'll looking like you. Maybe large picture. <laughs> well, we might have missed that. Uh, it's very hot. All right. Sorry. Thank you, Matthew. Water. Commissioner Plant. Uh, I just want to say thank you to all the um, hard workers that we have here in the county for the um, the tornadoes and the weather alerts and all. Of course, you know, several nights of that alarm going off was kind of interesting to say the least but i'm very appreciative that we do have that system in place in the county yes um we did take cover a couple of times with uh you know the tornado warnings that were in place and there was a lot of water and of course all the roads and getting a lot of road requests and i just so appreciate everything that the uh, especially public works is doing so um the next item would be for April the 22nd, keep Meriwether beautiful. And I know there will be a lot of cleanup and I know the cleanup is ongoing now from all the debris from the tornadoes that we had in January, as well as this weekend. So um, it's it's just a working pro process is all I can say, but thank y'all very much. And thank y'all for approving the, uh, the work at the courthouse because I know the workers at the courthouse probably we're looking forward to some work being done. Yep, that's it. Thank you.
Commissioner King. Pretty much the same thing again. It's been overwhelming to watch the county come together and work together as a team from the tornadoes we had recently to the flooding now and my phones, people calling, but even had people call and say, thanks for getting out here and getting things done. So I am getting a lot of emails or text messages about drainage problems, but I just kind of shake my head on those because with nine inches of rain, we've got some drainage problems, but we, I assure them we're getting to each one of them as priority. So, uh, you know, bear with us of what I tell them. So thanks again. Mr. Wurzler. Thank you everyone for the hard work like everyone else here. Man. It's, it's no sleep early in the morning. Didn't have that plan. People got up, responded, and helped. So that was very much appreciated. And we continue to not have to do that, but continue to respond that way to help each other when, when the need happens. I've been doing a lot of work in my job with uh, Troop County and LaGrange Development Authority as far as education and developing high school students to be ready for the workforce and those things. There's some interesting projects they want to extend out to the parents to get support and help with uh, that will help us in, in the IDA and in, in, in the school system and in, in the county as a whole. It's a so I, we, I'd like to set up sometime we can discuss those things. But I think it's critical for the future of the county and what, and what they're doing. And, and they want to include. They're not trying to look for anybody to add on to that cost. Uh, they, they're looking at it as a unified area and supporting each other. So. Good opportunity to help our young people that are not going to college right away, start teaching them what the real world is and showing them the opportunities that are around here. They can be very successful and have great lives without some of the other avenues. Maybe we can add that to work session discussion if yeah, that way to be open. All right. And is that it? Anything yes. else? All right. all right. So I'll say the same thing, except I'm not going to say it. I'll just reiterate all that too. But we're not going to be able to pay Beulah Evans. We're going to have to take that money and repair everything else. <laughs> I just had to mess with you. <laughs> you need a motion on that? Right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. One more thing. Okay, go ahead. Uh, I just would like to ask, I want somebody to find out what's going on with the sirens. Uh, you know, like Woodbury siren, they don't, they don't go off. Oh, with tornadoes. And somebody's telling me it's a repeater. Is that something that is a state or because I know Manchester got it, when it blew that power down yeah. right there. It's probably a city. Yeah. But I'll challenge. Okay, I didn't know if they were What's Is this that? the one that was on Forest Road? I don't know yes. The siren's on that. I mean, the repeater's on the side. Yeah, I think the repeater. The repeater, the one that got knocked down by the tractor trailer. No, that was it. Oh, no, no, no. That was it now. Last one, knocked the tractor. Oh, it knocked. Yes, he turned it into a roller coaster. From what Brent told me, I heard Brent say that that knocked out the side. All right, so where's that repeater at now? On the tower. I mean, the, the tower. I mean, I mean, is it been? Is it getting? Is it being addressed? The tower was literally spiraling. It looked like a roller coaster because it was. Uh, I can't remember how many feet up into the air. At this point in time, we are submitting a claim to the insurance, but we had to get cost estimates on that, and that took quite a while. It really did. It took that tower and just twisted it down. You can see it the next. Couple more tornadoes since then. It's not one. It's not one of them. Like to me, that's an emergency. Should be prior. Not the telephone alerts, because that works. Yeah, but a lot of people don't get it. We'll check into it and see. I always went off on landline and cell phone. We'll look into it. I, mean, I just had a couple of calls from people who won't know why it's not working. Some call the mayor. Give me your number. Go ahead. <laughs> Give them the county. All right. Is there anything else from the county commission? All right. Report from the county attorney. I'm trying to figure out what I would do with 10 pounds of Vidalia onions. Um, I, I have no. <laughs> you have no report. I have no report. I do understand we have a need for executive session for, for litigation, personnel, real estate. No tax matter. I don't think so. All right. 
our future meetings are April 12th, 2023, um, regular meeting at 9 a.m. April 25th, 2023, regular meeting at 6 p.m. And had we set a work session for that? We discussed a work session, but we have not publicly set that work session. Um, we talked about April 25th for um, a work session on buildings. We can discuss it and then make that decision on April 12th. All right. Hearing. All right. Do I have a motion to go into executive session for the purposes of litigation, personnel, and real estate? Motion. Have a motion. Do I have a second? Right. Motion and a second. All in favor? Motion carries. We are in executive session at 640. Do I have a motion to go back into regular session? Motion. Have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? We are back in regular session at 740. All right. A few things that we need to take care of. Um, employee Albert Partridge um, had a FMLA extended till March 24th, and it actually ended. He has requested to have that go from April 25th through, I'm sorry, March 25th through April the 5th, 2023. Do I have a motion to approve? I move. have a motion. Do I have a second? second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Motion carries. Just for clarification, it's not an FMLA, right? It's a uh, disability leave. FMLA? He, 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 his FMLA expired. He's requested okay. a disability leave. Okay. Under county policy. I wouldn't do it all right. All right. Next employee, Alatina Correa. Um, she was out, and this is an extension of what is it, Michael? She, she's also, oh, she's going to be out from June. This is to approve her being out June 5th through June 23rd to visit family out of country. This so, is for an unpaid leave, extended, extended leave. leave from June 5th to June 23rd to visit family out of the country. Do I have a motion to approve? So made. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Okay. Motion and a second. All in favor? I'm not doing it again. Mm -hmm. All right. Next item, Travis Daniels with Public Works. We need to extend his. This is another disability leave, if I recall correctly. It is. To go from 325-23 till 610 of 2023 to equal a total of 50 days additional. Do I have a motion to approve? Motion. Have a second? Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Motion carries, and they gave the 50 days. All right. Do I need some of these or do you? Okay. All right. Next item is to, for an opioid settlement, needs to be approved by the Board of Commissioners and authorized for the chair to sign. This is a lawsuit that will not cost the county any money. It is an additional uh, amount of money that could possibly come to the county by being in this settlement. Do I have a motion to uh Approve and allow motion. the chair to sign. Motion to have a second. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Motion carried. Anything else to come before the board? Do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion. Motion. Motion and a second. All in favor? Motion carries. We're adjourned.